online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound, the Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show, which, as Bob mentioned, prior to our 7 o'clock kickoff, is in uh, a celebratory mode. Uh, if you'd like the... <laughs> there's a red button version where you can find out how it would have been if we'd lost against Reading. Um, but... <laughs> But uh, fantastic news to get that uh, 1-0 win. And, uh, and Bob watched the game, and um, it really was a, a, a well, dr- dramatic game, to say the least. It, it was. It was amongst the most dramatic 1-0 wins that you could pro- probably watch, really. Um, and it's so nice to, to actually be doing a Wicked Wonder show when we've won on a Tuesday, which I think has only happened once before in the history of the show. Absolutely, and follows on from a draw at the weekend as well. Yes, indeed, uh, which which wasn't the most exciting game of football in the world, <laughs> but even so, a point's a point, and, you know, in a way at Millwall, tough place to go and all of that, you know, they'd won the last three, so, so you know, that that's not to be sniffed at. No, no, they do say that, don't they? And they do, yes. <laughs> don't sniff that's at that. Ga- that's what Gareth says to the team when he they says, come back. He says, don't sniff yeah, at that, he says. You know. oh, that was okay. No sniffing in my dressing room, he says. Yeah, we, we can do with the points, really, uh, all three rather than one, you know, uh, between now and the end of the season. Thank you very much. And how they responded against Reading. Absolutely. Coming up, we'll hear from the manager, uh, get his thoughts after uh, the Reading game. We'll hear from another Gareth as well, Gareth McCleary. We'll hear from David Stockdale, Alex Samuel on the way as well. And former defender who made over 300 appearances for the club, Matt Crossley, will be joining us as well. Lots to look forward to. Yeah, looking forward to that. Always good to catch up with the ex-players to, to find out uh, their thoughts and their memories uh, from, obviously, Adams Park and Lokes Park as well. And a birthday today as well. Yes, indeed. Yes, happy birthday to Scott Cashkett. Uh, big, big happy birthday. Happy birthday, Scott. He's probably not yes. listening, but he might do on the on the oh, on the, um, on the what's it called podcast. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Maybe. That's always a, always a, always a good way of uh, catching up with the show. Available on all popular podcast providers. Yes, the three P's. <laughs> that, was a, that was a somewhat seamless plug for the podcast version of the program. I was, I was quite impressed with that. Yeah, we didn't have to have it written down this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no rehearsal required. It was all very spontaneous. So let's briefly uh, cast our mind back to Saturday and the, the draw against Millwall. As you say, uh, no goals, clearly, uh, but a point and, and, and no goals conceded as well. No, well, and that was, you know, de- definitely a plus point. Um, David Stockdale is, is a bit of a revelation. Uh, you know, we, we've been talking about Ryan Allsop probably being player of the season, and he has been fantastic. Uh, but how wonderful it's been to, you know, th- yes, uh, just just be able to, to bring David Stockdale into the team. And he's performed absolutely brilliantly, which is, of course, what we've been hearing about his uh, appearances for Stevenage. And he's now carried that on with Wickham. And he's had such an influence on the team, as you'll hear uh, from the manager uh, coming up uh, off the pitch as well, even when he's not been playing. Yeah, which I think, again, is, is really nice. And it's, it's the sort of thing I think that we, we probably suspect um, of the team is that actually they are all so together. And we've heard that from Alex Samuel as well, I think, uh, where, you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter. They're, they, Of course, they want to be playing, but they are such a, a team. They're so together that they are all supporting one another. It's, you know, it, it's not a case of them sitting there, you know, hoping that actually the, the person doesn't have a good game so that they, they might have a chance on Saturday. So we were going to give you, uh, bring you the manager's reaction after the Millwall game, but that was the plan anyway. If, if, you, if you watch the game, you might remember that the weather wasn't particularly good uh, and, and that it was rather windy. Which made the post-match interviews quite hazardous. Thought we were good. David Stockdale coming in, first game of the season, okay, clean sheet. He's not going to want any more than that. Back forward, good. Um, that's it. Chances few and far between. A couple of penalty shots for both sides, but um, yeah, not one that's going to live in the memory of that one. Is it? No, I've known you a long time. It was poor. <laughs> <laughs> it's either it's either sort of recorded on the east coast of England, or, or it sounds like where the space shuttle is just lifting off. <laughs> it, it does definitely sound like it was sort of like on the end of South End Pier, on you know, in, in a bit of a hurricane, doesn't it? Gareth um, and the reporters holding on to the the railings for safety. <laughs> You know, and also there's a couple of things that you're sort of taught wh- when you go into radio. Or one of them, you know, if it is windy, tr- you know, d- just try and sort of like I- either position yourself, sort of like where 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 the wind is blowing, so that actually the microphone won't pick it up in the way that it clearly was there. Yeah, so you can get these these quite inexpensive devices to sort of help help um, muffle the sound of the wind as well. Yes, or you could just use a, a clipboard or your bag or whatever. But um, clearly, yes, uh, uh, that particular person who's doing the interview, uh, who I believe works for a national radio station, actually. <laughs> yes, you'd, uh, you'd really think they could have, could have had yeah, better equipment. Yeah, yes, you would, have, you would have thought maybe they would have picked that. <laughs> or perhaps, as you say, just facing in a different direction. Indeed, uh, anything. But anyway, 
Uh, yes. Thank you, Moose. <laughs> <laughs> but a point, which is good, and um, real momentum, because you feel, you know, especially with the Huddersfield um, result as well, and, and going into uh, the game against Reading, which obviously we've spoken about on previous programmes, thinking, ooh, you know, they're obviously pushing for promotion, Wickham obviously at the bottom, and, and we've really kind of had the games, really, that, that, that we'd have been expected, if you like, to, to get points from. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny, isn't it, that... Probably after the game, before we knew about Reading, we were probably thinking, oh, well, you know, point, we really needed all three against Millwall because it's now going to be really hard with the fact we've got Reading and then Norwich and then Watford. Um, but actually, that point looks so much sort of newer and shinier um, having beaten Reading. You then think, oh, well, actually, no, that wasn't too bad. Um, and, you know, as Gareth did say after the game, uh, that, that actually, you know, if you can get points away from home uh, and win your home games, that's, you know, that is the recipe for staying up. Well, that, that's exactly what we've done last two games you know we've got draw away and and a win at home and suddenly again the league table doesn't make quite such scary reading no absolutely we talked about how influential uh, david stockdale has been in the past two games uh, keeping clean sheets in both we talk about uh, as well the uh, the standards of reporters um before the reading game uh, david stockdale spoke to uh, a young budding journalist my name's kian i'm 10 years old and my favorite player is anthony stewart Oh, nice. Good choice. Have we got a question, mate? How does it feel? Is it easier to be a goalkeeper with no crowd or with a crowd? With TV now, mate, it's all the same. Just normally get told off to your face rather than on social media. I enjoy fans in the ground. I like the the interaction and being able to say hello and have a wave. So, I don't know. That's a good question, mate. Um... I'd rather it with fans, but it might be easier without. Um, it is weird hearing your own voice very loudly. When did you first start playing football and why are you always a goalkeeper? I started when I was five, just because my dad played football. And no, I was probably the best striker you'll ever see. <laughs> and that I was that good. They said, you have to go in net because it's not fair. <laughs> Behind the scenes news and how David Stockdale became a goalkeeper and some some excellent probing questions there from young Kian. It was. I thought that was a really interesting question, and I, I think David didn't actually quite get what 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 Kian was was getting at, which is, is it is it easier that you can actually you can hear both your 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 own players and the opposition when obviously there isn't a crowd there because clearly that all probably gets quite drowned out. No, and absolutely. I, I, you know, uh, again, I, I'm not sure what what the what the, the correct answer is, whether that is better or not. I know that we've already heard this season from David Wheeler, uh, who very much said that actually he doesn't really notice the the lack of crowd when he's in the middle of a game because he says that you're so focused on what's going on uh, that you know that you do pretty much zone out uh, and that you only sort of come to, for want of a better word, like you know if if there is a big stoppage in play or if there's a goal and, and then you you hear and you sort of acknowledge what the crowd are doing but actually the rest of the time you don't really pick up on them but i think with a goalkeeper it's probably a little bit different um in that you know obviously you are really really concentrating uh particularly when there's a corner or something like that uh and maybe it is a little bit easier or or maybe you can you know you, you can hear a little bit more and possibly judge what people are going to do when there isn't a crowd there as opposed to when there is yes i, I follow that entirely no, well, really, really good interview. Uh, I was impressed. Uh, you know, I, I, I can see him on on, on Wickham Sound in the future, definitely. <laughs> or hear him as well. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> So briefly, just talk us through the, the drama of Tuesday night, because obviously uh, g- getting a goal, you know, a penalty miss on each side as well, it, and there's lots of other drama as well. Oh, it, it was just amazing. Um, you know, I mean, the first half was it was interesting in that actually Reading were basically asleep for the first 15 minutes. Um, and, and I think for the first time that I can ever remember, certainly this season, uh, we seem to have more possession for the first 15 minutes of a game than the opposition did. Um, then there was a lovely, lovely move uh, from uh, Jordan Knight, uh, which as he burst into the, the penalty area, uh, which then unfortunately seemed to wake Reading up. And they were pretty much then dominant for the next half an hour. Um, 
beginning of the second half, obviously they they came out very much in the same vein. Uh, you know, you were slightly hoping that maybe we would we would have come back in the in the vein that we'd started the game. Um, but then, very much against the run of play, um, after three minutes of the second half, um, Fred pops up um, and and sneaks the ball in. Uh, very much a poacher's goal, uh, headed on by Anthony Stewart. Uh, I think the Reading keeper thought that actually he was going to be able to collect the ball, but no, Fred snuck in uh, to put the ball home um, and. You know, it, it, things were 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 then obviously they, the Reading put the pressure on, and you were thinking, oh, you know, goodness me, are we going to be able to hang on? Uh, before then, Ryan Tafazzoli, uh committed uh, a fairly bad foul, uh, which was I I would say just on the the edge of the box. I think probably if we have VAR, it possibly will be shown that actually it happened just outside. Um, but anyway, the referee was in absolutely no doubt, um, uh, said it was a penalty and also showed him the red card, uh, which clearly doesn't happen very often. You know, the double jeopardy rule came, you know, has sort, sort of been stopped now. So, But I think the fact that Tafazoli didn't really seem to make any attempt to get the ball probably meant that actually it was a fair decision uh anyway reading then hits the bar with the penalty uh which which was rather unexpected um and from that then about 15 minutes later uh uchi then ran into the penalty area uh the reading penalty area that is probably the only attack that we managed really whilst we were down to 10 men and goodness me he got fouled and, and we got a penalty as well uh wickham then of course Missed the penalty. Uchi, it was it, it, it was one of those penalties you were watching and you thought, I really hope he absolutely hammers this. Uh, and he didn't. It, it, he sort of like tapped it to the Reading goalkeeper. Um, and at that point, I think all Wickham fans probably thought, oh, goodness me, you know, this is this is going to now be so cruel that Reading are probably going to get an equaliser, if not a winner, when we could have been 2-0 up. Uh, but no, we, we, we stood firm uh, and really... St- saw out the five minutes of added time uh, very impressively and, uh, you know, really, really sensible, clever football from Wickham. Uh, We won a lot of fouls, particularly in that five added on minutes that really ensured that actually Reading never really looked like they were, they were going to be able to, to snatch the points away from us. Um, It, it very much, it wasn't like the Derby game when, as soon as Derby got that free kick with seconds to go, it, it, it just, I don't know, you just got that foreboding feeling and sure enough, they scored the, that didn't really happen to me on Tuesday now, although it did seem like a long, long time until the final whistle went. Um, you could have probably almost fit it, fit it in the third test in between it uh, from today <laughs> um, by, by, by the time that the referee had blown the whistle. But three points. Uh, and, and, you know, how unexpected against Reading, who um, remain fifth at the moment. Uh, but you then look at the table and, and you start to think, well, yeah, OK. You know, we're, we're now eight points from safety. Uh, Birmingham in 21st. Uh, we've got a game in hand over them. Um, unfortunately, Rotherham and Sheffield Wednesday, who are just above us, uh, they have two games in hand. But even so, it, it, it suddenly looks a little bit more doable um, than it did, uh, say, this time last week. Plenty of drama at Adams Park, and uh, the manager spoke to the media after the game. I'm guessing you haven't been involved in a 1-0 ex- as exciting as that before, have you? <laughs> Listen, I've had 500 games. There's definitely a 1-0 in there somewhere as exciting as that, but not in the championship, not against the team as the quality of Reading. But seeing the boys' efforts tonight is what I'm proud of. This, honestly and truthfully, results can come and go. When you're a manager and you see your boys putting that effort in and putting everything on the line and coming off in tears because uh, they they think they've let the team down. Uchi at Pisa, he was, he was magnificent today again, absolutely superb. And he comes off almost in tears saying, sorry, Gaffer, I missed the penalty. That's fine, Uchi, as long as you keep giving me what you're giving me. The rest of the boys follow your lead. David Stockdale at the back in, in goal was phenomenal, I thought. You know, he's in all his experience and, uh, and shows why one day he was fancied for England, never mind Premier League. Uh, it's a great result for us against a fantastic Reading side. We've got to take so much confidence from this tonight and start believing what I've been saying all season. We, we, uh, we're going to give this a right go. I mean, the goal was very justified. I mean, good, uh, good finish by Onya Dimmer to scrap it in. I mean, Reading did eventually start to attack. And when Ryan was, was sent off, were you thinking the worst? Or were you just thinking, keep calm, it will be OK? No, of course you think, you know, it's going to be tough now. You're 10 men against the championship side and a top five championship side, never, never mind uh, anything else. So... It was important that I kept my head straight, thinking about what I wanted to do. And uh, uh, we went to a five at the back and a three. In, so I could, I, I could keep the three in midfield because I thought that's where they were very strong, you know, in that midfield area. That did leave us just one up, so, up top on his own. 
And again, I thought Uchi was fantastic. And then when Admiral Muskwe came on, he really saw the game out well as well with his intelligence. And, you know, the legs were important. Jason McCarthy coming in at wing back, you know, it's all a real team effort. I've got Akin Fenwa, who's not even in the squad, shouting louder than anyone in the stand, you know. And, and that, for me, is Wickham. And that's what we are. We are together. And, and whatever happens, we'll be coming out swinging together in every single game. Can't wait for Sunday now. I just, uh, I'm sure some of the boys need a couple of days left. Well, a quick word on David Stockdale. He was brilliant today, making some fantastic saves. I mean, he's been very patient and waiting for his chance to play for Wickham again. How impressed have you been with him since he's come back into the side? James, he's been brilliant since he walked through the door last season. He's a big reason we got promoted. You know, people don't see what happened on the touchline and what, what the players who didn't play in the playoffs were. And David was one of them. His experience and his calmness... I mean, it's just so good to have in the squad. And he's been very patient. You know, Ryan Alsop's had a fantastic season. He's made some brilliant saves, some magnificent saves. And David has been very patient and been right behind him. Now he's he's taking his turn. You know, I think the timing of him going to Stevenage for three games was brilliant. It worked perfectly. And sometimes you get a bit of luck. I don't seem to have had any on the referee's decisions this year, but maybe that's my little bit of luck of David being up to standard. You know, he saved the penalty in his last game at Stevenage and, I can probably say he's played a big part in, in that one not going in today because I think himself and Lee Harrison, my goalkeeping coach, did some work on Lucas Giles' penalties. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a fantastic time for him to come in and I'm sure all the keepers are right behind him and, and they're all buzzing that he's keeping clean sheets. He's clean, clean sheets will keep us in the championship. So uh, 15 more, please, Dave. And with Ryan, what's the injury update on him? Yeah, he's, he's uh, he had a scan. He had... He's got an injury that's definitely going to keep him out for a couple of weeks. So we're going to have to uh, keep you updated on that. It's not a normal injury, but that means it could be a bit longer or a bit shorter. We, we don't know. It's, uh, you know. it's not your normal hamstring or your normal groin injury. So it's just a little bit different. So we'll keep, that, keep you posted on that. But that's why we've got two quality keepers here. And like I say, I can't thank David enough for being so patient and so understanding when he's not been in the side. But it's a testament to everyone that when you do get your chance, take it and grab it with both hands and excuse the pun because he's a goalkeeper. And finally for me, a nice easy game on Sunday against the league leaders. I mean, the win today will give everyone the massive confidence. I mean, what are your thoughts going into the game against Norwich? Performance is, is what I want. Performance is always what I want. And I've said that for the last eight years. I've been very performance-based and they will get you results uh, and as long as we keep focusing on the processes then we'll uh, we'll get what we deserve we have a chance to beat Norwich without a doubt I think at Carrow Road we took them very close I've got an amazing amount of respect for Daniel Farker he's a he's a top top guy and uh, and I'm looking forward to nothing less than a, a real tough test I mean Campwell and Pukki and Aaron's and and you know Hanley they've got some fantastic players some international players but I've got some names emerging in this Wickham side that I think people are going to start noticing, start finding out. And um, we have a chance to stay in the championship. And uh, as long as it's mathematically possible, you will not see any other rhetoric than me saying, we can do this. That's right, that's that's that. Is, that, is that a break you've earned, given what's happening in recent weeks? Um, it's, yeah, it's not really. I think it... It was uh, some clever play by David Stockdale as well. I think they, they, there's some pressure being put on Joe in there. The mental side of penalties is really tough. You know, it is. I, I used to take them myself. And they're not as easy as they look, especially with someone who's experienced as stocky in the goal. So to answer your question, is that payback for other luck? No, not at all. We, we've been on the wrong end of so much this season. Uh, I'm just waiting for that to come back. I'm hoping it'll come back this season, but um, we'll see. That's um, seven points from the last four games. It's, it's got the gap at the bottom, down eight points. How much of a psychological boost is it that the gap is down in single figures now? Does that have an effect? Well, it's it's an unbelievable achievement for everyone at this club to, to be to have this total. Never mind another total. You know, people have said we should be nowhere near the championship. And when you look at the size of the club, they're, they're correct. But this club is building towards being a championship team. Uh, I can't thank the Kuigs enough. Rob and Pete have backed me throughout. There's been Never any scares for me or anything. They've just been 100% behind me and backed everything I've wanted to do. The crazy thing is that we've had so little for so long that now we've got a little bit. We've probably 
not spent it as, as much as, as maybe other teams would have, you know, but I don't want to ever put this club at risk either. And I know Rob doesn't. So we're going to try and do it the right way. And performances like that is the right way. It's great. Uh, it's a massive psychological boost, like you say. But I think the boys believed before the game, never mind after the game, it just enhances what they all think. They all still think we can stay in this league. I can't, as a manager, that's all I need. I know all I need is that belief. I put them out there, give them a few instructions, but it's down to them. And at the moment, they're really delivering for me. Well, that's the next step now, isn't it? To get the teams just above you looking over their shoulders because mm. they may not have been looking at Wickham in recent weeks, but they are now. I'm hoping so. I might have put a bit of added pressure on it. Listen, we haven't been above that line all season and there's plenty of teams that are dropping below that line. Like I say, all our aim is, is to get above that line. That is all we want to do and that's been it all season. And it'd be just like Wickham Wanderers to achieve that. A much more positive uh, Gareth Ainsworth speaking uh, after uh, the game against Reading at Adams Park. We'll be chatting to former defender Matt Crossley next here at Wickham Sound. This is Wickham Sound. If you're listening last week to the Wickham Wanderers show, uh, firstly, thank you, uh, you'll know that uh, we had uh, local hero Mark West on. Uh, I'm very pleased to say this week uh, we can chat to uh, one of his teammates and also someone uh, I saw very, uh, I saw play um, very many times uh, in the uh, in the heart of the defence uh, from uh, you've made over 300 appearances. I'm very pleased to say uh, we can chat this evening uh, to Matt Crosley. Very good evening to you. Hello, sir. Yeah, evening. Evening to you and uh, evening to everybody. Yep, um, very good, thanks. So it's fantastic to, to, to have you on, and uh, obviously um, not too many uh, for, have put on the, the Wickham Wanderer shirt more than 300 times, uh, such as yourself. No, no, no. I mean, when I look back, I can't believe it, really. You know, um, you know, getting taken from um, Hampshire League by Jim Kelman and um, um, playing a few games for Jim and then Martin coming in and um, for playing... I've, I've played Martin's first game and played in, in his last game, and... Um, it was, um, you know, it was looking back. It was hard work, but it was well worth it in the end. Well worth it. It must have felt such a special time as well, because um, we had Glenn Creaser on as well for the one of the first um, Wick- Wickham Wanderers uh, ex players association uh, members that we had on, and and he and I remember obviously watching as as a, as a youngster. And how many, you know, it was very difficult to, to sort of get past you as a defensive unit. Not me personally, I didn't do it, but for for, me, for I couldn't, I probably couldn't have if I tried. But but for, for many teams, they they you know they, you, you kept a lot of them out. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I mean, I played with some great. Um, Defenders, um, it was Andy Kerr, Glenn, Terry Evans, um, Jason Cousins, you know, just just to name a few. But no, I mean that was our job. Um, it was very um, when Martin came in, it was very simplified by us. You know, it was um, keep as many clean ye- sheets as you can, keep the ball sometimes if it's got to be kicked or headed as far away from our goal as possible. You know, do that and j- just really concentrate on defending and. Um, it, it, I think the game's changed a bit now, but I mean, in my day, people, defenders actually enjoyed defending and um, you know, t- just a bigger thrill out of keep, keeping a clean sheet than, um, well, I was going to say than scoring, but I didn't score many anyway. But, um, you know, the, the, a clean sheet, come off the picture of a clean sheet and um, especially a win was um, was everything, yep. No, I was going to touch on that the goals you scored, not too many, but there were a couple that were, were especially influential, especially in the FA Trophy. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That was... um. That was um yeah I, I, I don't mean I scored two I've never scored two in a game before that anyway and or, or afterwards but no I didn't we I think the week before um, we lost three two I didn't play in that game I had a virus um um for about four or five days during the week building up to the Sutton at home game and um I came to the ground Martin said are you okay to play um, um I said I'm okay David Jones and the doctor said. I don't think he should play because he's lost. I lost half a stone, and um, funny enough, I, I went, and, went in and watched the Grand National while the game was on because I, I was so devastated that I couldn't play. And um, um, but then I think played Woking during the week, drew nil nil, and then um, Martin changed the team completely because we lost that game, and he thought he'd go for it. And um, we were so hyped up for this game. It was. I mean, Martin says to me now, he said it's in his top five. Um, games of all time since he's been a manager and I think it really and he's you know he's quite genuine when he said it was in his top five games that Sutton away game which we won 4-0 and um, I was very lucky to score um, two goals and, and 
I think go down and do uh, as one of the worst celebrations you've ever seen in football <laughs> as well. <laughs> Can you remember if the Grand National was yeah. a good race as well? Did that was that very good or not? Not so much. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't remember one. I remember <laughs> sitting in there thinking, I can't believe I'm not playing in this game. It was a massive crowd at Wickham. It might have been virtually a full house for the semi final, and um, I mean, obviously, they, you listen to what the doc, doctor and the physio says, and um, I was you. you I'm one of these players who, if I wasn't involved and we won, I didn't like being in the changing room because, I mean, I played most of the time, to be honest, but it being in the changing room, it didn't feel right to me, if you know what I mean. But so, um, yeah, I remember watching the Grand National, but I remember watching some of the game as well, but gutted that we, we'd lost that game. But, you know, things turned out well for me in the end. So There must have been so many landmark occasions to be involved with. You know, the FA Trophy final we mentioned at Wembley, uh, the getting promotion to the Football League, and even just sort of moving from Blokes Park to Adams Park must have been, you know, quite sort of great times to be at the club. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, that, it was funny. I mean, it was mainly under Jim Kelman at Lokes Park, and I was only a young 19, 20-year-old just running around like a lunatic. And... Um, we, we we did okay with Jim at, at, at Lokes Park, and then obviously Martin came in. And, um, and funny enough, I remember the last game at Lokes Park. Um, Martin said to me, "Do you remember? I mean, do you remember Pete Lansley used to do the um, um, I think it was the Bucks Free Press. Pete Lansley, do you remember the reporter? Yes, I'm not sure if you remember. Yeah, yeah. Pete Pete did the um, the the Bucks Free Press, and um, we played the Martin O'Neill." international 11 last game of the season and um i think pete had it in for me for you know i think oh, he's not quite good enough you're not quite good enough and um before the game martin came up to me and he said um you got to march your best and whatever you do don't tackle him let him go around you every single time i said okay fair enough and we played in the game and then i remember reading in the paper a couple of days later pete landed on a bit he's not he's not good enough for the club he's not good enough club you know he can't even get near george best to 45 or 50 and i think hold on a minute martin's just told me you know <laughs> not to go near him but yeah i mean no, i'll get on a with pete now anyway so it was just just one of those things but as i say, I was, I was a bit young and naive na- young and naive in those days and um as a footballer but going um going into adams park with martin and all the times we had um you know, Martin, Martin made it, he simplified the game, as I said, and um, everybody knew what they had to do. And he got a team in, which um, sort of everyone bought into the way, you know, he wanted to do it like Martin has done over the years with different. Oh, we seem to have lost Matt with a bit of, bit uh, of order his back. Yeah. Sorry, I think yeah. your, your internet froze there, sorry. Oh, did it? Did you miss me? <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, sorry, I must be boring myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was, it was great to hear about obviously playing under Martin O'Neill, as you say, and, and it must be a fantastic occasion to be sort of part of that team as well. And it was a pretty sort of settled side that you had in those days as well. Oh, no, it was. I mean, as I say, Jim, I think the first trophy final we played in, nine of the players, Jim bought in. And sort of Martin came in, and as I say, just made it completely. Jim was great. I think get on well with Jim still. I, I speak to him now and again, and um, I, th- I thought Jim was a great manager. But Martin came in, and um, everybody knew what their jobs was. He, he made us like think on our feet on the pitch. There was no set way of playing. It was it was just trying to win the game. You know, if we had to, if we played a game where we could pass the ball about, we passed the ball back. If we played a game where we had to sort of kick it in the channels all game, we did. And, you know, it, 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 as long as we won, he was happy, you know. Um, you didn't want to get on the wrong side of Martin. And, um, if we lost, um, you soon knew it, you know. I, I came in for a few of those um, few of those rollickings. <laughs> <laughs> Which, um, he, he, um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, so, I, yeah, he, he always said, when I played, when other players played well, um, he was selling them to Real Madrid, but when I played, Billy always told me he was selling me to Maiden or Bay. You know, so, you know, but I, I played mo- most of the games for him, so and, and I still speak to him now. And we, we, you know, we always have got on well. He's a great, great manager and um, also a great person. Yep. So you must have done really well because, to, to my knowledge, you didn't end up at Maidenhead or Basingstoke. I oh, know. <laughs> that that was great. It was just one of these things. He said, he always says, like, he'll say to Keith Ryan or whatever, you you were brilliant today. You were brilliant, Kel. I'm going to try and sell you to Real Madrid. And he'll say, you, to me, after a game, you were brilliant today. You, he said, I'm going to ring up Maidenhead or Badenstone to see if I can sell you there. <laughs> All the other players who were going to, it was me, either me or Keith Scott were going to Maidenhead or Badenstone. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you realise at the time that yeah. you, perhaps Martin would go on to do so well at the likes of, you know, Leicester and Celtic and Villa and the Republic of Ireland as well? I, I, I think, look, when, you, when you're there at the time, you're not, you know, we knew he was going to move on. We knew he was going to move on, you know, at some stage. And um, we were lucky that, you know, he stayed that, I, th- I think he could have gone a year earlier. He stayed that extra year and um, we um, we had a good, I think it was in the League One where, that extra season he stayed. It was the only season, I think, where only two teams went up and we ended up six in the league. If we'd have ended up six in the league at any other time, we'd have been in the playoffs of the championship, you know, as the team were today. But um, but we knew he was going to move on and uh, I've kept in touch with him all over, all, all through the years. Um, my good friend is Steve Guppy and, you know, I speak to him every week still and um, I... I I had done some work for Martin at Knott's Forest. I watched some players for him and um, uh, and had I uh, was drinking coffee with him the week we went into lockdown in March last year. We were, it was during Ch- um, Cheltenham Festival and we, was, we couldn't believe that, you know, that was still on. But, yeah, it, it was. Um, he's a great man and, uh, as I say, great manager and an even more great person. And how did you find the step up personally from, from non-league to the Football League? I mean, everyone remembers the, the Carlisle game and it was such a sort of a momentous occasion, but did, did you notice much of a difference? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It was, um, it, we, we, I remember speaking with Keith Wright, because Keith, well, most of us have done it. I remember, it was, I can remember the conversation with him saying, I can't believe how hard it is, you know, like getting, this is after the first few games, you know, the step up, that, um, I think it might have been good, teams are full-time and professional and um, the fitness side of things and, and I, I, the centre-forwards were, you know, were, were, were slightly better than they were in the conference and um, I think I'd say it took, took about 10, 15 games to get, in, get into the swing of things but I think we had quite a decent start anyway but, but no, no, it was um, we found it and when we went up to League One, you know, because we'd been professional for, for a year, I mean, I think we found it a bit easier and we, we were quite comfortable in that league as well. So, yeah. You must have had such, been so pleased to have such a connection with the club as well, as you say, playing over 300 uh, appearances for them and, you know, staying at the one team for such a long period. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd, I, I had no intention I mean I never had agent or any a few of the players did have agents but I, I never had an agent it was at the end of each sort of I was two or I was I think I was only signing two years contract from when I two to one year contract from the day I went to the day I left and um you know I remember signing contract to Martin and Martin sort of virtually writing them out himself I just just said you know yeah you go and write it down and He'd say, "Don't say anything when you go and see Ivan." You know, I'd have a couple of quid on top and um, just sign it and, and stay where I was. You know, I was enjoying it. It was hard work. It was hard work. You know, as in, um, I, I cannot, you know, can say that every single every single game I played, you know, I, you, well, you had to be bothered to play for Mark with my, when Martin was manager anyway. So, um, you know, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed every minute, except when we lost, because. Um, <laughs> Martin was on your back. <laughs> <laughs> and you must be such a, a proud member of the Ex-Players Association as well. It's such a great kind of club, if you like, to be part of with regard to, you know, uh, former players who've, you know, been through similar experiences. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we keep in touch. I mean, I really enjoy going to... I think I might have missed one. I can't remember what, over the years at, at the dinner, but um, I, I try and make uh, events, so I definitely go to all the dinners and... Um, the, the, the team sort of in the early 90s we've got a little whatsapp group we've got about 10 12 players in there and we, we you know someone's putting a joke on there every day or you know we we, we we keep in touch with each other all the time we 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 meet in on the south bank in london i mean we haven't obviously because of because of the situation at the moment but we meet in there but sometimes there's might be 10 of us and we have a drink we, we we're too old now to go meet at night because i'm we have to get back get to bed so we meet we, we meet at lunchtime and have a couple of drinks something to eat and then um it's quite easy we all get the train from different different areas and meet meet on the south bank yeah so we we all we all keep in touch and i've got some great friends you know through, through my time at wickham as well from you know top to top to bottom you know people yeah so aside from the last 12 months where not many people have been doing not many much not much at all uh, what are you up to sort of these days well, I've got a small gardening business, which um, I, um, I I I had been able to work all the way. Th- I mean, it, it was quite over um, uh, over the Christmas, over, over the winter, which it does. I mean, um, I've got a small signs sort of franchise as well, which I I um, work work with. So I've got like two. They're like two part time jobs. 
Um, but it's full time, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yes, in the garden, it's going to pick up again now. And um, yeah, so I've been quite, well, I was quite busy, you know. Over it. I mean, it was a bad time, but I was quite happy to, to carry on working, you know. I can't sit at home all day. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. Person. You must be so pleased as well yeah. to see the, the team where they are now as well. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, uh, what, what for so sorry for the fans, you know, you know, hopefully, you know, you, you never know in football, you know, there's great, you always hear of a great escape, you always hear of these, I mean, I heard Gareth talking just a minute ago, you always hear of these great escapes, and um, obviously, it, you know, if, if they stay up, it'd be unbelievable, but um, I just feel sorry for the, you know, it's, you have a season in the championship, we're going to be great teams which are in there, you know, there's some big teams in there, great grounds to go to, and I'm sure Adams Park would have, um, being filled up virtually every every other week, and um, it would have been just just brilliant. And you, and also, you know, when you got a crowd in at, at home, you know, it um, makes a difference with with the results as well. But you know, it's, it's the first result I look for every week anyway. So um, you know, I'm always looking at the t- how many points now, how many points behind, you know. So no, no, it, it's brilliant achievement, unbelievable. And do you have a bit of a soft spot for the defenders as well? Do you, do you look out for the the current players who play in your position? Um, Are you still there? Oh, now he's disappeared. Oh, no. I, I could do my, my best uh, <laughs> impression if you want. Do, do you look out for, <laughs> for current midfielders, uh, defenders, and think? I, I do, yes. Well, I, think I, I, very much, I very much like defenders. Sorry, Matt, I think we lost you. Um, do, I was just asking, do Sorry, you Sorry, no, I was just doing an impression. <laughs> Bob was filling in for you. Uh, he, was your, he was your stunt double at an d- d- <laughs> adequate position. Uh, no, sorry, we were just asking, do you, do you sort of have a particular soft spot for current defenders as well, uh, players in the current side who, who play in your position? Um, uh, the, the, uh, at Wickham at the moment, yes, say, or, or just any any defenders. Well, yeah, both, I suppose, because um, as you say, the, the game's quite different yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I, as I say, I, I haven't. I, I, I went. I can't remember when I, I went to a game about eighteen months ago. I think. Um, no, sorry, when I was watching the I was watching some game for Notts Forest, I came to the ground a couple of times, and uh, I quite like the um the lad at centre half, uh, Charles Charles. Yes. When they played. Are you still there? Yeah, Darius Charles. Hello. Oh, no. Apologies. Uh, Matt's inter- we are, are, are inter- one of the internets, as far as I uh, But fantastic to speak to I you. Think it was, I yeah. think it's here Oh, no, he's back. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> no, yeah, the centre half I quite liked play, playing there. Um, I think he might have even got man of the match on that, that night. Um, Charles, is it surname Charles? Are you still there? Yes, uh, Darius Charles. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I quite liked him. That you know, as, as I say, this, the, 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 one of the games he, he played well in that game. But no, no, no. To say defending is a different art nowadays. I mean, you got to get the ball off the goalkeeper in the six-yard box. You know, and I'm thinking, oh, what the fans are doing? <laughs> you know, um, I, I, was, I was quite happy, you know, to to to, be, to to have the ball at my feet about 40 yards further on from the goal. You know, but um. Yeah, I do put my head in my hands sometimes. I think so, the amount of goals teams give away by, you know, trying to play it out at the back when they don't have to play it out at the back. I'm all for it, but, you know, if you don't have... That's what we, we, we come back to Martin. He, he was like, he, he let you think on your feet. If, if if you can do it, do it, no problem. If you can't do it, think of something else to do. It was like that was no set, set way of doing it. Yeah. Fantastic. It's been brilliant to, to share your memories. Thank you so much for your time and great to be able to speak to you. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Colin. Thanks a lot, Bob. And, um, yep, I will catch up with you whenever. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Uh, Matt Crossley is speaking to us here at Wickham Sound. This is Wickham Sound. Welcome back to the final part of the Wickham Wanderer Show, or Extra Time, as we're calling it. Uh, coming up, we'll uh, give it, do a brief preview, although we heard from, from Gareth, but we'll, we'll chat to Bob about uh, uh, the Norwich game. Uh, but first... <laughs> Sorry, I was still thinking about the um, the early interview with uh, David Stockdale. That was tickling me. Uh, Key and, and his um, quite excellent questions. We'll have to have him on again. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Uh, chatting to David Stockdale. Uh, earlier in the week, actually prior to the Reading game, I caught up with uh, Wickham Wanderers forward Alex Samuel to uh, discuss all sorts of things, but started by asking him about the fantastic uh, pre-match team talk that he gave, which uh, literally inspired the win against Huddersfield. Before Huddersfield, you know, I think... You know, when we were playing, you could see that there was, you know, we've just taken an absolute battering for the last few games. So I just thought, you know, coming in uh, into that changing room, 
before that game. And I just said, look, <clears throat> I've been in these situations before when I was at Newport and I think we had like 12 games left and 12 points, you know, deficit. So, you know, I've been in these situations before personally. And I was just saying, and obviously, you know, with Newport, we we managed in the final 10 minutes to make, you know, to, to stay up in the football league. So I understand the pressures of what we're going through now. So I just thought, you know what, what an amazing story this will be, you know, and, you know, everyone again, from the first start of the, the season has written Wickham off. And it's, again, there's, you know, I can't remember how many, I think 18 games at that point left. And I said, look, do not give up yet. You know, we've got to keep pushing. And what an amazing story this will be for us to stay up. And, you know, it was, like I said, you know, for the manager to uh, recognise that. And obviously it was it was really a, a boost for me as well and a boost for the team. So, yeah, and obviously you could see the belief and that the team did absolutely amazing on um, against Huddersfield. And, you know, hopefully now that's, that's kind of sparked us off to um, have a good run in at the end of the season. I think it certainly feels like it. And does it feel, we were talking on the show a few weeks ago, and does it feel as players that it was really kind of the Preston FA Cup game where, again, you, you felt like, progress was really made, being made and then unfortunately you had the, the two games postponed as well that must have kind of really really derailed things yeah it was it was unfortunate just because obviously you know we had such a great performance against Preston and you know football is such a game of momentum you know and that's something that we always talk about especially at Wickham is momentum even in a game how momentum changes uh, but certainly after that win it was frustrating for us just because obviously we had you know the two games called off and then even just having a few days with, I think, the snow hit before the Tottenham game as well. And it was quite frustrating, just, you know, preparation time. And yeah, it was frustrating, but that's what I mean. We've just had to really buckle up and keep going, really. And um, I think Huddersfield is is something that I think we deserved for a long time, I think, because I think there's been performances we've played really well and just some things, you know, decisions from referees or you know just unfortunate circumstances that hasn't you know has been against us really so I think you know the Huddersfield game really um it was just amazing to just get the win it was a fantastic feeling obviously for the fans and obviously for, for, for yourselves as players as well and to come from 2-0 down in the way that you did too yeah it, it felt like you know it felt like Wickham was back really you know the amount of games you know that even the the years that I've been here where we've been behind and that never give up mentality. And I think that was something that for me personally was amazing to see that the team was able to turn it around just because I think that's what Wickham's all about is that never give up mentality and to keep pushing even when it looks impossible. And, you know, that's something that we're going to be going into this end of season with that belief, you know, that nothing is impossible and to never quit until, you know, that final game, that final whistle. So uh, that's to be assured, uh, even for every Wickham fan, to know that we're not going to give up and we're going to keep pushing until that final whistle and we're going to fight and, yeah, we're just going to keep believing. Because this month seems to have been so congested for you for, for fixtures and I'm sure, you know, fans, and again, I don't, don't know as players, but do you tell that there's a group of fixtures that you've had now against against a lot of teams that have been in and around you in the table and then sort of coming up, you've got sort of teams against, you know, much, much higher up? Yeah, so obviously we, we understand we've got some really big games coming up and I think it's just... It's funny, isn't it? In football, a lot of times you think, oh, you know, looking at the table or we're going to struggle here. But, you know, at the end of the day, anything can happen in a football match. And we've seen, I think, even last year and the year before in League One, you know, there, those teams we were coming up against. And we actually took more points off the big clubs than we did, like, with the teams around us. So I think it's nothing, you know, it's something obviously not to, to write us off with these big challenges ahead because I think we've even shown early in the season that we can match these teams, you know, like Norwich, Reading, where it was a very close game. So, and I, I even think that we've improved and progressed as a team. So who knows what coming up against these teams that, that we'll do. It must be so encouraging as well from your time in the championship. You know, you've literally only lost two games quite heavily. The rest, as you say, loads of great chances have been created. Refereeing decisions don't seem to, you know, it must be a real feeling that you should have so many more points than you've got. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what's, what's been the encouraging thing for us as well. Like it's been, I can think even just on one hand, you know, 
uh, the games where we've truly put our hands up and say, yeah, we were well beaten that day. Most of the games we've been really well and, it, you know, well contested and, you know, we've been in the games. And it's just, I think, you know, just tidying up on these final little details now in front of goal, defence, all over the pitch, really, that I think in this last end of the season, we'll, you know, we'll pick up the points that I think we, we deserve from the whole season. And the January edition seemed to have uh, made a real impact as well. How, how have they settled in? Yeah, brilliant. You know, I, I think it's good and needed for us as a team just to bolster up and even just to bring in even more competition, I think is always a good thing as well. And it kind of pushes everyone on. So they settled in really well. And um, as a team, you know, we're looking forward to, to progressing and uh, moving forward. Because I think every every Saturday and, and Tuesday, when you see the team sheet, you think this is it's so positive, such a sort of attacking players and, and we can cause teams a lot of problems. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the thing. I think it's just more more weapon in the arsenal, you know. So it's really good. Obviously, you know, Gaffer has uh, got a lot of decisions to make, you know, because we, we do have a lot of quality on that pitch and especially on the bench as well. So... Yeah, it's always good to have a team where you have choices and that's that's something that I think as Wickham the last years we haven't had the, the the privilege of having that, you know, so I think we're in a good position. And as players, are you still enjoying, if you like, the, the chance of playing in the championship and coming up against some of the teams that you are facing, or is it just not quite as good being at the bottom of the table? No, that, look, you know, I think it's amazing you, when you see some team sheets and the, the the oppositions you're playing against. You you know you think, wow, this is this is who you know this is where we're at at the moment. So every game, I think, especially every team in the championship you come up against, you know, you've got multi-million pound players in there. So it's amazing, you know. For me personally, I don't take it for granted at all, just because I, I understand, you know, how amazing this opportunity is. So. It's it's always a pleasure to play, especially at this calibre. You know, I think it's the fifth biggest league in the world, you know, so it's amazing to be a part of that. And so great to hear the manager speaking so positively as well, despite, you know, the, the league position. But is that something that's reflected in the, the mood in the dressing room as well? Yeah, definitely. We've been playing really well recently and I think we've just got to keep that mental. You know, again, like we, we discussed earlier, you know, that not giving up mentality and, that's something that we've just got to keep together, keep tight as a team. And, you know, that belief and that pushing forward as, a, as, as one is going to be the thing that will keep us up in this league. So that's what I mean. We've just got to keep pushing and keep moving forward. I mean, I think that's something that really comes across in the games as well, sort of how hard the, the players are trying and how, how positive and how, how you don't give up. Yeah, exactly. You know, you could see even that belief of just keep going, not giving up which is obviously very encouraging because it's you know it's easy as a, as a team in our position it's probably easier just to throw the towel in but that's not w- what we're about we're about you know giving every ounce of our energy and what we decide uh, to keep pushing forward and to keep moving and to keep like I said not to give up because as we sort of mentioned I know football doesn't really work, work like this but you'd, you'd think you'd see Millwall coming up especially at home on, on the on the fixture list and you'd think oh this will be really tough but but to get a, a point against them and to keep a clean sheet must must have felt quite good yeah especially you know we've we've unfortunately been you know leaking a lot of goals so for us as a team I think uh, especially defensively as well that was a real boost for us just to go right okay you know we can actually do really well against you know again like you said in in the den against Millwall, a very tough opposition uh, with very tough circumstances. I mean, the pitch didn't help. It was a real fight. We brought that fight and we matched them and some, in some parts even overmatched them. So uh, it is really encouraging for us. I was going to say, it must feel good to have two positive results in the last two games. Yeah, the, exactly. And that's, that's something that we'll definitely take into the, these last few games now. And we look forward to, yeah, just seeing and keep believing and um, I'm excited to see kind of, you know, like I said, it only takes a couple of wins to get on, you know, to that momentum moving. And I think we are, we do have momentum at the moment and that's something that is very important and we want to keep on top of. And obviously, as you mentioned, the, the division is so tight and it can be so easy for other teams to get dragged down into it, which, which, which will help as well because it'll mean you'll have, you know, less points to make up really. Exactly. And you just never know what could end up at the end of the season, you know, we saw in the championship last year, the fact that, you know, teams can lose points at the end of the season. I mean, you know, it, it's all very possible. So 
I think for us, it's just right. Let's get as many points as we can. Let's and I think it's important as well for us just just to take it game by game. You know, if you start looking too forward ahead, you know, you, you kind of lose the the aspect of what what's what we need to do in the next game. So we're just taking it game by game, and you know, going right, we can win this, and moving forward like that. And it is, as you said earlier, a great message that it's you know it's still only February, and there's still a lot to to really to play for. Exactly. There is so much to play for. There's so many games left. And like I said, all we need is a couple of wins and it changes things. And then, you know, the teams above us start panicking and it it can change so quickly. Like in football, things can change uh, very quickly. So we've just got to keep going, keep having that attitude of not giving up and keep pushing forward, keep pushing the team. And yeah, Let's see what happens. I, I'm sure that we're going to see an exciting end of the season. I remember Pete Kelly saying at the beginning of the season to stay in the Championship would be an even better experience or achievement than, than getting there in the first place. Yeah, it will be. And there's anything is possible uh, in football. And um, I've experienced it as a footballer. Um, so that we, we have that belief. We believe that as a team as well. We believe that we can do it. We believe that we've shown um, what we can do as well in this league. And it's something that we're going to keep pushing forward and fighting for. And what will be your message to supporters at this time? Keep believing. Keep being there for us. Keep supporting us. Keep cheering us on at homes because um, that means the world to us as well. And, um, you know, as, as, as from, the, from the club, you know, thank you for your support, really, because I um, you know how tough it's been for everyone, not just, you know, it's been a tough season. But also, you know, how tough it's been as well outside of football as well. And, you know, just thank you for your support, really. And uh, let's 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 stay up in the championship. And I'd be very remiss not to mention that uh, you must be very proud uh, of another achievement shortly in the in the Samuel household of, of a debut album coming out very soon. Yes, I am. She's so proud of her. Um, obviously, Ray Sam, obviously, um, obviously known as uh, Rachel for me. Yeah, I'm so proud of her. She's obviously gone for her dreams and that's something that I'm so proud of her of. And yeah, really excited, honestly, on a um, new album that's coming out. There's some incredible songs. So I'm excited to um, for all of you to, to hear that as well because um, it's uh, exciting times ahead. And how is appearing in a music video? It's good. It's very good. <laughs> Uh, I, I've got to say, I, I did enjoy myself. Um, you never know. I was thinking and maybe after a football career, you know, maybe this is uh, something I need to look into. <laughs> but um, you know what? That's uh, got a long time ahead for that. So um, I'll just stick with football at the moment. It's a good advice, isn't it? You, 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 want, you, want, you want Alex to focus on his football career and not appearing in pop videos. That can be very distracting. Yeah, uh, that that's very true. Uh, that you know that that definitely sounds. Like, you know, he's got time after his career to do the pop videos. Absolutely, but as we touched on earlier in the show, it's been so much more kind of uh, positive, hasn't it? And there's so much more uplifting feel, and and, and fans as well. They a lot of them, you know, a week or so ago, kind of given up, and now it's much more. You know, we're going to stay in the championship and and relishing the challenge of the the top v bottom class this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, Norwich for really flying at the moment at the top of the division. Uh, they've won their last four games, uh, most recently on. On Tuesday, they beat Birmingham City a 3-1 um, and, yes, are currently top with 67 points, um, which I'm, ju- I'm just doing the maths. I think we can still just about, maybe, we could just about catch them up. Maybe, maybe not. Um, <laughs> I, I think possibly those days are past that actually automatic promotion, but I think we can still make the playoffs just about. Yeah, fantastic. Um, as long as no one else uh, plays. Well, yeah, indeed. Absolutely, yeah. If we could have lots of postponements, then, <laughs> then that would be handy. Um, but, yeah, well, uh, you know, it's, uh, of course, it, it, it's going to be tough. That's a very obvious thing to say. But yes, it is going to be tough. But I would much rather us be facing Norwich, having just beaten Reading one nil, and have you know having this amazing optimism that suddenly seems to be surging through the team, um, than than you know than not. You know, if we'd uh, sort of like drawn with Millwall and and lost rather badly to Reading, then obviously you know th- th- this Sunday could be one of those slightly unwatchable games. Let's really really hope that it's not that. Uh, you know we were fantastic against Norwich uh, last time, uh, losing two one to a very very late free kick. Um, you could definitely have said that actually Norwich should have been down to ten men very early in that game. So I think you know with the, the, uh, as with all Wickham games, there is a chance. Championship, it's a funny old division. You never know. And as we touched on on Tuesday. 
there as well. Eight points from safety sounds so much better than than twelve a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, and and just you know mentally, just looking at that table, it looks so much more doable all of a sudden. Uh, you know, even though we've now got to play Norwich, uh, and don't forget Norwich is twelve o'clock on Sunday. It's not a Saturday kickoff. It's twelve o'clock on Sunday, uh, and then Watford and Watford today has been moved uh, to a seven o'clock kickoff, uh, and that is on Wednesday. So seven o'clock on Wednesday, twelve o'clock on Sunday. Uh, the next two Chad Boys games. Good admin news there from Bob. Hope you've enjoyed the show this week. Fantastic to chat to Matt Crosley. Uh, do join us at the same time next week. We'll be hearing from former manager Brian Lee uh, in the week that he turns 85. Very much looking forward to, uh, to catching up with him as the uh, Wickham Wanderer show continues here at Wickham Sound.